Open science is a new paradigm in doing scientific research where openness is pervasive across all the aspects of scientific output production. Uh, who's using this? Who's benefiting from this? So in this presentation, I'll try to show you some African communities of practice that are using the open science platforms, namely the SciGay open science platform that I, uh, I showed you before in my, in my previous presentation. So I'll, I'll show you I'll say, so some, I'll say you some words on Saigeia. By the way, you have a roller banner talking about Saigeia with the um, final number and figures, with the facts and figures of the, of the project. And then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll drive you through a kind of uh, list of uh, communities of practice and their applications using the open science platform. And you will see how many of them are using digital repositories like the one we want to, to uh, create with another. The purpose of this talk is twofold. From one side, provide you information. From another side, to raise your curiosity. And to make you aware of uh, some scientific endeavors which are going on in Africa. And uh, sim similar things are being done in Aksum or in other places in Ethiopia, we can trigger collaboration. Uh, this morning, uh, the, our friend from Ralga said collaboration is vital. This is actually what we want to, to raise. So, SciGaia. SciGaia was a new funded project, stands for, stands for uh, Energizing Scientific Endeavor through Science Gateways and Infrastructures in Africa. Uh, the project uh, lasted for two years and we, we ran from May 2015 to um, April 2017. The project was led by Dronel University London, uh, several very important uh, partners in Europe and uh, several very important partners in Africa. Through, uh, 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 um, and uh, um, among them, the uh, WACRAN, the West Africa Research and Education Network, on, as a gateway to all the entrants in West Africa, and the Ubuntu, the Ubuntu Alliance, the East Africa, the Southeast Africa Research and Education Network, as a gateway to all the entrants in, the, the, in, in that part of Africa. And uh, the uh, Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in South Africa. I was, my university was involved and I have been the technical coordinator of this, uh, of this project. So, uh, the SciGaia work plan was organized, organized in four work packages, uh, support the communities, uh, community identification and, su and, uh, and, uh, and support creating guidelines and uh, uh, training material, identifying uh, and uh, supporting communities, developing services and uh, 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 running training, doing training. In this presentation, I'll, uh, I'll talk about WP2, but uh, you have all the, all the, all the links on the roll-up banner and of course uh, there are links in, uh, in my slides. By the way, all the slides presented today and tomorrow will be physically linked to the agenda, so you can download from there, okay? So, this was the common platform. A platform made of knowledge bases with search engines across linked open data services, open access repositories, science gateways, portals to run applications on cloud infrastructures, uh, infrastructure forums for collaboration, and uh, uh, courseware, online course system for MOOCs, for massive online open courses. Uh, basically, these were commons based on in open science enablers like open data, open access, um, international standards, digital object identifiers, e-infrastructures, open source, open educational material. These enablers want to enable open science. As I said, you, in the usual way of doing science, you start from the concept and you publish and then you can review publications. The challenge is to go the other way around counterclockwise here, start from publication and get back to the data and the software which has been used to produce that publication and to reuse the, the data. Uh, a, a, an important thing is that all these services are ha support federated access. This means that uh, you get one set of username and password and you can seamlessly access all the services 
we are supporting, we are uptaking the so-called SAML standards and we are supporting identity federations. Tomorrow in the end zone, the first thing you will do is to get uh, your federated credentials and you will move across all the NADRA services with the same set of credentials. So just to answer one of, the, one of your questions, we take care of authentication and authorization in a very serious way, but we want to allow people to get only one, only one set of credentials and go access different service providers. The Wi-Fi of our campus can be another service provider. The library in the US or the computing platform in Japan. The internet is like national research networks. Identity federations gather into a global identity federations. One is EduGain across Europe, Africa, and, uh, and America. So if you have your credentials, username and password, you, 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 you can log in on thousands of different services. Logins means get authenticated. In some, others, in some services, authentication equals authorization. In many others, authorizations and uh, 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 authentication are um, uh, uh, decoupled. So to get authorization, you should undergo another procedure. So, uh, so this, is a, this provides you a bird's eye view of the communities of practice that we identified and supported in the SciGaia project. Uh, in each color uh, correspond to a different kind of application to a different communities. And you can see nicely this north-south collaboration. And you can see how, what we did in Ethiopia, where we ran this Hackfest. So now I'm guiding you through a kind of uh, sequence of applications. Uh, the first, uh, we get the two different kinds of communities. Communities which were already identified when we, we created the proposal. And so we wanted to support this to advance. And new communities, we had uh, activities to identify new communities. So for those communities which were already identified, we supported the Technology Transfer Alliance, the iGrid project, the YMIA ICT project, and a number of um, uh, bioinformat uh, bioinformatics and health organizations in Tanzania on with the use of Weka. So TTA. TTA is a non-for-profit network of universities, Europe and Africa, that uh, uh, creates common master programs. So uh, TTA is a club. For example, the University of Aksum can, can join TTA, and then you can exchange students for master programs. So the idea was to uh, create a collaboration platform to let students uh, advertise their their will to go uh, to to go somewhere. Uh, well, the the TTA is coordinated by the Royal Technical University of Sweden (KTH), and uh, to advertise also positions. Uh, TTA is based on a pedagogical mo uh, method called problem-driven education. So you are accepted if and you are assigned a problem. So you, you must solve a problem, even collab collaboratively with other people, to get your master. So this was the collaboration platform with uh, several applications. That's an application on uh, how to find uh, local pharmacies across Africa, even in uh, rural areas. This was an application to deploy sensors, weather sensors, in a rural area of Africa, even in the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania, and to connect to create a network of uh, weather stations across Europe and Africa. iGrid project was an a EU-Africa project. In Africa uh, uh, was the uh, Tanzania, Kenya, and South Sudan, if I'm not mistaken, partner of the project. And this was to create uh, microgrids to bring power and electricity in rural areas across Africa. So here we created a portal and they used the open access repository to store their documents and they created using uh, REST APIs, standard web interface, they in the, in the iGrid portal, 
you, you were able to see the documents stored on the open access repository. So in, in a, the open access repository dissolves, is hidden, and you just have a beautiful web interface using the REST API. So I'm curious to see if you're using this space REST APIs to build uh, portals to analyze data that you are stored on the digital repository. Uh, why me ICT? That's another project. This, the, the goal of uh, why me is to deploy a, 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 a web of network sensors across South Sudan, Tanzania and Kenya, especially in rural areas, to improve the data for web forecast in order to help farmers to uh, take, uh, uh, to make, to, I mean, to, to, get, to get their, their food before, for example, heavy rains come. This is, uh, there is a lack of uh, points in the, in the map of uh, weather sensors. So the big advantage is that uh, all the weather sensors are 3D printable. So basically they created uh, CAD, 3D CAD models of the stations, the Tanzanians, the Kenyans, they, they both 3D printers, they create, they, they printed their sensors and then they started going in the different parts of their countries to deploy the sensors. And uh, from the electronic point of view, uh, the sensors are equipped with the very low consumption electronics. Just to give you an idea, one thousandth of the consumption of your smartphone to stay alive in parts where the no electricity can be, can be brought. Uh, so here, the idea was to integrate WRF in a portal. WRF is a de facto standard in weather and climate simulations. It's a, is a, is a model very much used by many uh, forecast agency, weather forecast agencies around the world. It's a mesoscale, mesoscale program, very complex. And uh, you need to know all, how to manage all the inputs and all the parameters. Here we create a web interface to run uh, uh, WRF on the high performance computing infrastructure of the Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology. And this you can see the, the WRF portal. Weka. Weka is a machine learning algorithm. It's a set of machine learning algorithms. Here the idea was to use, to train Weka on the images coming from the Wisconsin breast cancer to uh, provide computer-headed diagnosis to doctors for breast cancer diagnosis in Tanzania. So to have a kind of second opinion done by a computer. Learning with uh, using a very well open data, anonymized, but open data coming from the Wisconsin Breast Cancer Center. And here you can see Weka integrated in the portal. So this is, this, th th that's it for the already identified community. I would say that uh, most of the work done by SciGay has been to identify new communities and support them. We did this with the concept of champions. Uh, we uh, came up with this uh, e-research uh, e, uh, e hackathon a very intensive training event where people, we opened call for applications, people applied to propose applications to be integrated in, this, in the SciGay Open Science Platform. We selected them and we invited them for two weeks. We did this twice in Catania in my department, one in Lagos, Nigeria, and one here in Addis Ababa. People proposed applications, we invited them, and uh, we trained them in the first two days on how to use the open, the open science uh, uh, services, and then in the subsequent 12 days, they developed their own applications until they had uh, uh, stability and uh, functionality to be deployed on the science gateway on the portal. So, these are the 35 champions that we identified and supported throughout the, uh, time, the, the, the uh, time plan of the project. And for each of them, so you can go to this page, and for each of them, you have uh, the information on affiliation, 
the short profile, the use case description, what are the services, the open science services use, and information, presentations, videos, interviews, whatever. So it's a, it's a knowledge base, it's a non-negligible non knowledge base of scientific research carried out in Africa. And you can, we have this for all 35 people. Okay, so first, Medical Image Processor Repository, MIPAR. MIPAR is a Nigerian application and uh, it aims at creating a digital repository of anonymized open uh, medical images, brain images or images coming from related to other, part, to other anatomies of the human body. Uh, here people can donate images, the images are stored on the, on the open access repository, tagged with the DOIs so that you can connect the different images if you are studying, for example, a subset, a sample of people. And you can download image. So it's an exchange point. And uh, you can download the image and uh, run locally a program to uh, visualize and analyze the image. But you can do more. You can, you can process the image through the web. So we integrated a few processors on in medical images, calculation of uh, hippocampus volume or other kind of uh, um, uh, 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 processes on the, on the images. So you can run your job and when your job is done, you, ca you are notified through the web page or, or via email and you can download the output of the process, the processing. This completely opens the possibility to run, to do science through the web. And the possibility also to compute 3D images, to run some uh, comparison between two groups or two measurements. That's another application, the Kenyan National Public Health, uh, Health Gateway. This is a public health application. The idea here is to create a um, multi-agent, multi uh, multi-stakeholder application to mitigate the number of uh, motorbike accidents going on in Kenya. So, Basically, I can show you here, show you practically, is a web application and a mobile application. So when, and you can use, so when an accident happens, a policeman or the, the doctor on board of the ambulance can record the place uh, of, the, of the accident and insert some data. Data stored on a database and uh, for two main purposes. One, to provide decision makers on the safeness, the safety of some roads. On the other hand, to provide drivers with alert information when they are crossing hot points. They receive, they basically, they receive on their mobile alerts if they are crossing a point where there is a number, an high number of accidents. Um, Opening means collaboration. Uganda came and they reused the same concept to, 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 uh, to implement the problem in Uganda. Here was not only a, um, a scientific problem, it was also a citizen science problem. They wanted to create a website to tell stories about the dangerousness of, sa of, of roads and the safety of, of driving with motorbikes in, in Uganda. So, very quickly, this is the web application. You have a lot of information uh, for decision makers, and you also have the information about what are the hotspots and uh, where you should avoid or you should drive more carefully. All this is exchanging open data. And then you have ambulance response teams, storytellers, creative spaces. They want to run physical spaces that people can learn about this kind of applications. Another application. This is a new service communication model for rural agricultural extension. Basically, it's a collaboration platform to bring together stakeholders from agriculture management and farmers. Uh, this is the homepage. And you have a lot, all the, uh, you, you have all the different stakeholders and you can upload the resources and the resources can be stored on the open access repository. So the open access repository is the sharing platform behind. 
Uh, this is the one of the things that we would like to do with NADRA. University of Ibadan, Nigeria, they had an institutional repository that uh, didn't comply with any standard. And they wanted to make their data more open. They had statistical data uh, regarding diseases and other things. And uh, we moved all their repository to the SciGaia Open Access Repository. Uh, on Monday and Tuesday, we, are discussed, we discussed with the librarian and the IT staff of the University of Gondar to do the same, to move all the contents of their institutional repository to, to copy all the contents of their institutional repository to the NADRE central repository. And then we hope to be able to do the same thing with the Axum repository. Another uh, drug design discovery and development platform. That's another, that's another set of uh, uh, bioinformatics tools to uh, do in silico drug discovery. Uh, creating new drugs, combining proteins using computer programs. And this is uh, some papers on the open access repository, and this is the, the portal, and uh, some information. And you can add the drugs, you can uh, run calculations uh, on drugs to create a new information. The same thing for plant, for plants. So plant repository. Actually, we had two applications. One is just a database of plants. Another one is to uh, um, um, uh, an application to use plants to create the new um, drugs. OK, so again, collaboration. They took the MIPAR project. Instead of sharing medical images, they wanted to share plant images. The same thing. So they took the same open source code and they cloned the, they cloned the, the open access repository and they started populating it with plants. Uh, last but not least, um, agent-based simulations. I told you that uh, you can um, connect all the output of a given research using DOIs. That's an example. So here uh, they are using Repast. Repast is an agent-based simulation model, and it's very well known in the in the um, simulation en uh, simulation engineering domain. And um, uh, here is used to um, uh, simulate the spread of infections across regions or across continents. So here. I mean, you cannot see, but I can, I can tell you. You, you have uh, DOIs, and you have the paper, the virtual machine containing all the software needed to reproduce the paper, the data, and all the parameters of the simulation. So if you download all of them, you can reuse the simulation and adapt to other contexts. <coughs> of course, so we went more. We integrated this into the Science Gateway and people were able to run repast through the web interface and get results through the, get inter through the, through the, uh, the web interface. So let me summarize the second presentation. The most amazing results is related to the new communities of practice. So the combination of the e-research ACFES model and the concept of champions really helped us to identify a large number of research groups in Africa and put them together. At every workshop, we invited them to discuss the commonalities and the diversities of, their, of those applications, of their applications. Out of these 35 champions, 15 of them support the new and emerging communities of practice. And applications refer to important societal challenges and address several UN SDGs, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. What's important? Several. Uh, services of the SciGaia Open Science Platform have been used to build NADRA. So whatever is there, you will be able to do this within NADRA because the services and the technologies and the standards are the same. Thank you very much. <laughs>